Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave and this is my daily ruling. Today's question was suggested by a viewer. Amy plays show and tell. Both her and Nick control Ismaro Hem of Kanda, and they each choose to put a second one into play. Who chooses which Ismaru they're keeping around first? Which one goes to the graveyard first? All right, so of course this never actually happened in a real game. No one ever played a show and tell to put in a legendary 2-2 that costs one mana when they had another copy of the same card already in play. But this is a great question to evaluate a judge candidate's understanding of a couple of important game concepts. And maybe in the challenge question, we'll see how those same fundamentals can build into the answers for some more realistic scenarios. So the first important fact that we'll need is that all state-based actions are performed simultaneously as part of a single game event. This means both Amy and Nick will put their extra Isamarus in the graveyard at the same time. While it is possible to devise a protocol where they each choose independently which one they're keeping before that happens, it's kind of a pain to do, and fortunately, it's unnecessary, because the second important piece of information says that if two players need to make a choice at the same time, the active player makes that decision first, and then the other players go in turn order. This is called the active player, non-active player, or APNAP rule, and it gives us the answer to the other part of the original question. All right, now for a challenge question to test your understanding. Amy plays show and tell, and she puts in a Gaius von Beisler, and Nick puts in a clone and copies Amy's brother's Yamazaki, and Olive puts in a clone and copies her own Lobelia, and Pat puts in a Shocker Unshakable. Oh yeah, and when Amy plays the show and tell, she had a Gaius and two copies of brother's Yamazaki already in play, Nick had a Telepathy, and Pat had a Shocker. Describe the sequence of events that happens in the game. We'll say that it's Amy's turn, and the turn order coincides with the alphabetical order of the player's names. Okay, so first up, that same active player, non-active player rule that we talked about earlier applies when each player is picking a card to put into play with show and tell. Now, usually that doesn't really matter for anything, but here, because Amy, Olive, and Pat are playing with their hands revealed, that means these players' choices of what to put in will be known to all subsequent players when they're making their respective decisions. Nick's will not be revealed until after everybody is chosen, but he still does have to lock one in after Amy commits her decision, and he cannot change his mind after seeing what Olive and Pat do. After everybody has locked in on a card to put into play, those cards are all revealed and all enter the battlefield. Now, part of that process is that Nick and Olive have to choose what they're copying with their respective clones. Because the clones are entering at the same time, we use the APNAP rule again to determine what order their controllers have to say what they're copying. Nick has to say first, and then Olive. After this, any applicable ETB abilities will trigger, but before they're put onto the stack, the state-based action of the Legend Rule occurs. Because there are now three permanents named Brothers Yamazaki in play, the Legend Rule applies to them, as well as to Amy's Gaius, and Olive's Lavilius, and Pat's Shockers. Now, we already talked about how the APNAP rule applies to making those choices, so Amy will pick one of her Gaius's and one of her Brothers Yamazaki to keep around, then Olive and later Pat will do the same for their Legendary Permanents. As noted before, all of the permanents subjected to the legend rule will be put into their respective owner's graveyards at the same time. Then ETB abilities that have triggered will go onto the stack. Triggered abilities also use an APNAP rule to decide the ordering for this. Modes and targets are chosen as part of the process of putting an ability on the stack. So we can say that first, Amy will declare a mode for her Gaius. We'll say she's making everyone sack a non-token creature. Then Olive will declare a target for Lobelia's ability. Then Pat will do the same for Shocker. Because of how the stack works, Pat's Shocker ability will resolve first, then Lobelia, and then finally Amy's Gaius. We'll observe that even if Shocker kills a creature, that creature will not be ex eligible to be exiled by Lobelia because it was not in the graveyard when Olive chose a target for that ability. In contrast, any of the cards that were put into the graveyard with the Legend Rule would be valid choices. Now finally, when Amy's Gaius ability resolves, can you guess what order everyone will choose what to sack? That's right, we used APNAP ordering again. Even though officially all the creatures get sacrificed and hit the graveyard at the same time, the decision of which creature is getting sacrificed will be made according to the turn order, just like all the other examples today, with Amy locking in first, then Nick, then Olive, and finally Pat. Hopefully with these examples, you're feeling confident enough to handle app-nap scenarios that might come up in a game that you're playing. If you'd like a little bit more practice, check out the video that I've linked in the description. But that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another Daily Ruling. Until then, I hope you have a great day.